Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn and the topic of today's video is on INFJ villains and I have studied and I've tried to look into under the skin of an INFJ and I believe, I believe and I want to say this as I start making this video that we are all capable of doing bad things, we can all be evil and evil is a difficult thing to cope with sometimes and we've all like, had bad experiences with other people and this video is not meant to make INFJs out to look worse or better than other personality types all it's done, meant to do is highlight what will happen when an INFJ is pushed to the edge. What they typically tend to do when they are, when they go dark. And um, starting with INFJ villain number one, the deceptive trickster. I want to show also that every villain has a purpose. Like uh, as horrible as their deeds may be, they do get us to realize some, some important things. They attack certain virtues in our society and they in doing so show us how important this virtue is, how important it is to protect this virtue and to fight for this value and to maintain it. Now looking at the deceptive trickster, what they attack of course is our knowledge and our ability to trust each other and our ability to know what's right and what's wrong. The deceptive trickster believes, and this is the INFJ, as I said, pushed to the corner, that every one of us is greedy. The deceptive trickster believes you are greedy, that you thirst for power, that you thirst for riches, that you thirst for material wealth, that you are acting purely to further your own interests. And this INFJ plans on and predicts you to do this very thing. This INFJ plays on our greed and they offer us temptations, things that we cannot resist but things that we have to say yes to. And the best example of these INFJ tricksters are Loki in Marvel's Avengers and Rumpelstiltskin in, for example, the Once Upon a Time series. Mr. Gold as we call him. Now these INFJs, uh, beyond playing on your greed, also play on and cause you to distrust other people. They cause you to, they play on your past experiences and traumas. They read in what are your traumas, what is your past experience of life, and they use this against you to predict that you will return to this trauma. And when you do, this will happen. So often... Uh, the key goal to beating these INFJs, and I want to share how you can beat these INFJs, I don't want to just talk about them, I want to show what you can do about them, is of course, get rid of your greed. If you are greedy, you will lose. If you are able to resist temptation, you will win. If you are able to act out of something that isn't greed, you will outsmart this INFJ. And you will have disproven them. <laughs> if you are able to trust other people beyond that, you will also have disproven them. And if you are able to think originally to jump on a new opportunity or to do something new, you will have outwitted this sign of J. The second INFJ villain is the destructive demon. And uh, the thing about this one is this INFJ is almost Hitler-like. This is the INFJ that attacks life itself. They have been hurt. They have lost someone perhaps. They have seen war. They have perhaps been backed into a corner and due to their bad experiences of loss they want other people to lose. And what they have to come to learn is this is a world for the strong. This is a world where only the strong can live. This is a world only for the strong and the weak cannot exist. They cannot be allowed to exist. This INFJ believes that people are angry and people demand some kind of justice, some kind of right to be wronged. And so these INFJs will typically take over a system and control and use people to destroy and to hurt and maim and to take away the lives of the people who are weak. 
This INFJ is beaten when you are able to maintain peace and trust with other people. When you are able to respect and to love those that are weak as well as those that are strong. When you are able to show that all lives are sacred. And when you are able to resist becoming overconfident or becoming caught up in being strong or trying to beat them with power. Typically if you choose might to disprove this INFJ, they will beat you. If you choose to get angry or to get loud or to lose your temper, they will beat you. So that's the core way to beat this INFJ. The INFJ outlaw. Now this is the ESFP-like INFJ. This is the INFJ that to a high extent seeks to attack your character and your sense of virtue. These INFJs have had people they believed in that in some extent deceived them or hurt them or betrayed them on their expectations. They had someone good that they trust in, trusted in. They had someone that they had relied on and that person had sure been proven to be a fraud. And so this outlaw like INFJ is seeking to prove that there are no good guys. So we have the Joker in Batman in the Dark Knight. The Joker attacks Batman, destroys his reputation, shows to the world that this is a fraud, that Batman is not a good guy, and tries to deliberately attack Batman's virtue and Batman's self-righteousness by making and pushing Batman into a situation where he will lose his face and go against his own moral code. So the key thing in dealing with this kind of a character is of course similar to with the destructive demon to not lose your face, to not lose your anger, to not become reckless as they want you to. Like when you do, they laugh at you, they become happy, like they're winning, they can feel that they're winning. And also beyond this, when beating the outlaw, when resisting this person, it is all about, to some extent, uh, remaining true to your character and to your virtue. Remaining strong, remaining strong in the face of injustice or in evil, remaining true to your moral code and doing and standing up for what's right, even when you are pushed into a situation where you are muddied and when your hands are eager to get dirty. And beyond this, it is to be true to who you are and to show other people who you are and not to run away when they test your character and your appearance. The final line of Jay Villain is the Wolf on Wall Street, the Leonardo DiCaprio. He did such a good expression of what happens when a line of Jay gets taught that the only value in life, the only currency is money and wealth. This INFJ will resemble an ENTJ, an evil ENTJ, in their thirst for gaining wealth and material status. This INFJ will portray an image of being strong, of being amazing, of being like impressive and this cool guy, this amazing guy who has everything. And the what is it that makes this INFJ go bad? What was it that made this INFJ become like this? Well, perhaps they were shown to some extent that the world was not fair. Perhaps they were shown to some extent that their justice and their values and their ethics didn't matter, that it was only about playing along with the rules and using the rules to your advantage. Perhaps it was only about the world for the strong, the world where only those that have power and material wealth are successful and where your personal self does not matter. So I was able to hash out these INFJs by flipping their first or last three letters, by turning their first three letters around and showing the INFJ who is in extroversion, in sensing, thinking or perceiving. What I saw was that an INFJ is not a villain by being true to themselves. 
but by lying to themselves. The INFJ villain is someone who is not being authentic, who is not being real, who is not being themselves. And I think that's true for the other types as well. The villains of the other types are similar in the ex to the extent that they believe. They believe that they have to be something they're not. To live and to cope with a world that has forced them to go to war. A world that is all about money, greed and richness. A world that is only about being evil and looking out for your own selfish gains. A world that only matters if you have a camera on you and people who see you and people who yell at you and people who applaud you. <laughs> 